Hey guys, it's LEGO Boy Z3. These are some methods on the Pyraminx. So today basically what I'm going to be showing you is kind of the progression of the methods on the Pyraminx. So like what you should start out doing, what you want to do if you want to get more advanced, and just like all the different methods and how you should follow them. So I'm kind of just going to go through one method at a time and kind of tell you what that method entails and uh, where you should be before you start using that method. And also I do have a link in the description of all these methods and the outlines of basically how you do them. Uh, not a full tutorial, but just kind of outlines. And I'll also have videos annotations on this video. So go look at that link in the description uh, to see more information. And just by the way, I'm not going to be showing you the tips, these things, while I'm going to be doing this method. I'm just going to uh, go without them because they're kind of pointless. And so the first method that you'll likely learn, uh, if you just want to learn how to solve a pyramid, you just got one, or you just want to learn how to solve one, the first method that you want to use is intuitive. And what intuitive is, is it's just intuitive. Basically, you just solve the centers. So you see these pieces, the yellow ones. Yeah, they're all lined up right there. Uh, so these pieces are all centers here, here, here. And then you just move the edges around with a couple of triggers, just like that. And you just kind of move it around in a way so that eventually you can get here. And just kind of using a couple tricks, you can just solve the pyraminx. And it's kind of just kind of a messing around method. You can learn an algorithm or two if you want to, uh, but really the, it doesn't require any algorithms at all. And so you just solve the centers, then you solve the edges. The next method that I would recommend learning if you want to try and uh, get into speed solving pyraminx is an easy layer by layer method, which I came up with. Um, it's a pretty good. I just made a tutorial on it recently, and that will be linked up there. And so it only uses one algorithm, and that's that one that I just showed a minute ago, where you just go like that and switch these two pieces around. And basically what this method is, is you just make three centers like that. You don't have to get the last one. And then you put one edge in, you put another edge in, and then you put this last edge in in a strategic way so that you only have one algorithm left to solve the last layer. And so I can get down to like 10 seconds using this method if I do it really fast. And so... Yeah, pretty much the easy layer by layer method that only requires one algorithm. So just do first layer and then easy last layer. Now there's kind of a category of methods that's called the V first method. And that's where you get the V along here. And then you orient and permute the last four edges. And so the easiest one besides the one that I showed you is just the basic layer by layer method. And this requires learning four more algorithms on top of that one that you already know. And so what that is, one of these algorithms is this one. And what all those algorithms do is it just gets the last layer. And so instead of worrying about permuting the uh, pieces, the top pieces like you do in the easy layer by layer method, you just put the last edge piece in and then you do one of five algorithms to finish the top off. And so that one's pretty nice too. I also have a tutorial with all the algorithms. To be honest, I wouldn't really use this method because I do not use the first methods normally. I used what's called a top first method, which is what I'm gonna show you next. Uh, but really layer by layer, you should learn this. It's a good step in learning how to do Pyraminx. And there's some more advanced methods that I'm not gonna cover today uh, that you do use uh, those last four pieces. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to go on to the next one. Now, this one is called keyhole. This is the first one that you'll likely learn if you want to do a top first method. And what that is, is you get these pieces as well as these centers. And then you just do the last three edges right here on the face. And so it's kind of just the opposite of the V first methods. And so what you want to do for a keyhole is just you get two pieces. You line up all of the bottom pieces. Uh, that I actually got lucky and I didn't have to insert that piece. And then you just do a last layer case, which you have to learn uh, four of, five of. One of those algorithms is the same as, it's basically this one, where you just flip those two around. And so one of those you'll probably already know if you're following this path. Uh, the four other ones are pretty easy. Two of them are just like this, just four moves. And so you have to learn five algorithms for that one, but they're all pretty easy and just a little trigger for finishing up the last uh, part of it. And so I'd recommend this uh, method if you want to get into V or top first methods. And a lot of fast uh, pyramid speed solvers use V first method or top first methods uh, for getting fast. And that's what the rest of these methods I'm going to be covering today uh, are. 
So the next method you might want to learn if you want to get a little bit faster at keyhole is called Oka. And so I actually use this method in conjunction with another method called one flip, which I'll show you next. And so what you do for this one is it's pretty similar to keyhole. Uh, just put a piece in and then you find the piece that goes next to it and put it into the wrong spot right there. And then you get all the centers like you would with keyhole and insert this piece up into here, but it's a little bit faster to insert it because you just have to do that, three moves instead of four. And then you just do the last layer case again, and that's pretty much it. So Oka is just kind of a different version of keyhole. You just kind of move the piece over here, and so when you're inserting the last piece, it will just make you a little bit faster. And there's no extra algorithms or anything uh, that you really need to learn for this uh, method. So if you're getting pretty fast and you want to get a little bit faster of keyhole, uh, then I'd recommend using this method. Now the next method I'm going to show you is called one flip, which is a method that I personally use. However, it's not really a full method, like you're not going to use this exclusively. If you're getting into one flip, you want to learn all those algorithms because it does take quite a bit of effort to learn. You're going to be using a bunch of different methods. You can use one flip, you can use Oka, you can even use keyhole. And so basically I use one flip and Oka together, sometimes keyhole. And so, yeah, so let's get on with one flip. Basically what you do is you get two pieces into place, not the third, third one, uh, and you get the third one in backwards like that. And then you look at the last layer and you do one algorithm that will both uh, flip this piece around and solve these bottom pieces. Then you just do your last layer case. And so you need to learn 10 more algorithms for this one. Uh, there's a bunch of different cases for moving around or uh, orienting the center pieces. And so there's 10 more algorithms, so 15 algorithms in total with the last layer cases. Uh, but I would recommend it if you're getting like pretty, pretty fast. I don't really have an exact time. But if you're trying to get pretty fast for pyramids, I definitely recommend going at least up to this method. And yeah, again, if you're kind of just casually solving pyramids, uh, you can just use like keyhole. Keyhole is a good place to stop if you're just doing that. Uh, but layer by layer is a good one too. But you can also learn Oka. But once you're getting into like one flip, that means you're like really wanting to get good in pyraminx and so yeah but yeah if you just want to get fast and learn those three methods up to one flip and you'll be good but there are a couple more methods that i don't have tutorials on yet i may release tutorials on them in the future uh, those methods are called wo and nutella and so i'm going to show you that so first what wo is is where you get uh the whole layer the whole top right here and also this piece that was really slow and then you basically look around the cube, uh, red is on the bottom, and you do an algorithm that will get all the red uh, centers facing down. So it's basically one flip without the one being flipped. And I don't actually know how to do this method. That was just a guess, I failed. But basically you just do one short algorithm and that will get all the bottom centers. You don't have to do anything else, just do the last layer case. So it's basically just three steps. And it's really easy. Uh, but you're not going to be exclusively using that uh, method. Really, if you're just going to be learning this method or the next one, it's just going to be kind of a side thing that you'll use if you see that it's a good uh, solve to do that with. And the next one is Nutella. And so this one's pretty similar to, you basically just get one piece. Uh, let's find this piece here. And then you get the next two pieces in backwards or flipped around. So like this and so like that. And then you do an algorithm to finish off the last couple pieces. Again, I don't know these. So you do something like that and this will remain solved. And these ones will be solved. And then you do your last layer case. But again, I don't know this method. And yeah, so the last ones, WO and Nutella are pretty much just one flip only starting off with a different top and just changing it up a little bit. Uh, WO is solved, Nutella is just the two pieces flipped around. And one flip is just one piece flipped around like that. And so each of those three methods, actually, the two and one flip, uh, both use 10 algorithms for flipping all the centers or the, yeah, the centers on the bottom. And so, yeah, you'll learn those if you want to get like in the couple of seconds range. I'm not going to get there for a really long time. And these are the two methods that I don't have tutorials on on my channel besides intuitive, which I may make eventually. And I may make a uh, tutorial for these eventually. Uh, but for now, just click on this annotation. I'll bring you to Drew Brad's tutorial. Uh, Drew Brad's is a pretty good pyramid solver, I'd say. A lot better than me. And it'll explain those to you. So just check that video out. It'll also be in the description. But for now, I use one flip and Oka and sometimes keyhole. And if you want to get pretty fast, uh, start with those. You can also start with layer by layer and my easy layer by layer method. 
and intuitive is of course the easiest way if you just want to learn how to solve pure ranks. But that's pretty much it. I feel like I'm dragging this tutorial on way too long. Uh, those are the methods that I would recommend uh, learning. That's the uh, order that I learned them in for the most part. That's the order I would recommend learning them in. So yeah, if you like this video, leave a like down below to show me that you liked it. Uh, stay subscribed to be notified of another video like this comes out. And also leave some suggestions for other tutorials like this that I can make in the future. Maybe any other puzzle that you want to see a similar video on. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!